I know I said I was leaving for a while in my last video, and that's entirely true, but I wanted to make this short video beforehand because I felt like I owed it to everyone to say this, and just writing up a comment or community post wouldn't really do it for me. This is the last time I want to say anything on this subject, and then I'm going to lay this issue to rest. If you haven't watched the last video, you should probably do that. If you already have, then let's go, and I'll try and keep this relatively brief. So I've gone through a lot of the comments on the video, not all of them because there's entirely way too many to sift through. I had a constant knot in my stomach for days leading up to posting it, and actually making it public was about the most terrifying thing I've had to do. I was constantly second-guessing myself, wondering if my arguments were airtight enough, wondering if I provided enough evidence to support my case, or if the tone was contradictory. Basically just had every negative thought running through my head up to posting it, and I just avoided YouTube for a few days before even looking back at it. I'm really stunned and overwhelmed by the support I've had. There's negative comments here and there, expected, but just the staggering level of people sympathizing with my position and willing to give me a chance to hear me out really, really made me feel a lot better. I don't really like to involve my personal life on my channel, I'd much rather just talk about movies and video games, but seeing so many positive comments has really honestly made me feel better about this whole situation and I can't thank you guys enough for it. In the week since it went live, a few updates came up. Some people have come forward with eerily similar stories of the girl I talked about in the video claiming she cozied up to other YouTubers on other servers in the past, most notably being Spockter Theory, who curiously was also accused of being a pedophile based on screenshots people took completely out of context. I know the out of context thing has become a bit of a meme at this point, but it's honestly kind of disturbing just how easy it is to remove the context and nuance from a situation to push a narrative that just isn't true, and knowing she was tangentially involved in that is kind of telling. Even my friend Steele had a shocking amount of evidence against her. Despite her repeated claims of abuse and grooming only a matter of months after I blocked her, she was incredibly insistent on pressuring him into sexual conversations. Hilariously, she changed her story again, claiming that she was 13 at the time. Like I said, she can't keep her own story straight. She changes it whenever it benefits her, and now people are smelling the bullshit and figuring out that she's not only a pathological liar, but a hypocrite and an attention whore. Some of those people involved with the Underhive, Audist Files, Pinecone's own personal server, and so on, have abandoned the whole crusade and turned on one another. Others are still scheming, including one of my former friends, Panda. First off, my history with Panda is shaky, to say the least. He was on my podcast in the past, but over time I had him on less and less. We weren't very good friends, I found him really annoying, and he just acted weird. One anecdotal example is when me and my girlfriend jumped in a voice channel to talk while we were playing Overwatch together. The voice channel was limited only to podcast members, so we figured there'd be no issue with us using that. Until Panda decided to hop in and play Roblox while talking to himself. We awkwardly asked if he could just leave, and he refused to. So we cut our game session short, since it was frankly weird as shit to listen to Panda babbling to himself while playing a completely different game. When I tried consolidating podcasts to less members per episode so we weren't talking over each other, I'd make a cycling list of people to have on, and even if he wasn't on that list, Panda would just insert himself into the call until I told him he had to leave. He's a very socially awkward person, and not exactly pleasant to talk to, and even the best of circumstances. Eventually, he would come to me time and again with bizarre questions. He once asked me how old I was, I asked why he wanted to know that, and he never answered. Which eerily now makes me realize that they were planning to start this whole shit storm months and months ago. He would complain about his name being run through the mud, as if anyone gave enough of a shit about him to do that. Because some mods made fun of him, and he has such thin skin that he couldn't take it. He's been pressing this narrative that I spurged out at him for absolutely no reason. This is because he intentionally does not show any of the shit leading up to me exploding at him. As I said in my last video, I had been messaged day in and day out by multiple people, himself included, about how I was a horrible person for not doing anything, how everything needed to be run a certain way, how I needed to ban this mod or make this person head of the server, so on and so forth. As I also said in the video, it wasn't right of me to explode at him, but it's curious how he neglects to mention how he sent me this fucking monster of a message, complaining about very nearly every mod in the entire server. Other people have even talked about how Panda was vying to take control of the server himself well before that, ban all the mods he didn't like, and appoint new mods strictly under his own criteria. Which definitely fits the messages he sent me, since as soon as Steel left the server, he immediately asked me to give him ownership of it. After all the drama that happened there, I was reluctant to hand it over to someone else to see if they'd fuck it up even more. And after years of knowing Panda, knowing how socially awkward he is, and knowing that he hates pretty much everybody, he was about the last person 
I'd ever dream of handing it over to. Like I said in the video, not right of me to explode at him, I need to work on controlling my anger, but Panda intentionally left shit out to paint himself as some kind of innocent little saint. Now, they're scheming to say that I defend pedophiles because they claim I'm holding back information on Steel. Problem is, the only new information I find on Steel is always in his favor. As I've said before, these people are incredibly selective with what evidence they want to show. Back when this argument with Panda happened, he sent me a file that incriminated Steel and seems to contradict the screenshots he gave me that I used in the video. However, Steel dug up the DMs he sent to Gav, proving that she not only lied about her age and led him to believe she turned 16 in December of 2017, but also proving that she later made an alt account under a different name, claiming she was 17 in order to solicit more naked images from Steel. And then she changed her name back to fuck with him again. He even deliberately asked numerous times what her age is to make sure he didn't make the same mistake twice. And for those of you not familiar with Discord, changing your name is easy as shit. You literally just give yourself any new name you want, type in your password to confirm, and it's all good. You can do it as many times as you want, it takes like five seconds. And this isn't even to mention the fact that Panda and the rest of the Underhive, Audist Files, Pinecone crew shared these files amongst themselves and, by the looks of it, they appeared as though they intended on sharing it publicly. The only problem is, sharing someone's naked images privately or most definitely publicly without their consent is very much illegal. Oh, and by the way, Steele says that some of those naked images were taken in 2016. At that point, Steele was 16. So technically, they are not only in possession of, but actively sharing around literal, real-life, underaged porn. <gasps> And even despite their evidence, which compelled me at first and led me to almost turn on steel completely, more evidence to the contrary continues popping up time and time and time again. As I've said before, I will reevaluate any position I have on any given subject with the presentation of unfalsifiable evidence. But as I've also said, these people never provide the full context and deliberately withhold valuable information that contradicts their narrative. Valuable info such as how they defend the girl I was involved with trying to make her out to be this precious little victim that didn't do nothing. But people on Kiwi Farms point out how she was constantly trying to cozy up to Spockter, and evidence I showed in my last video showed her doing it to Digby, and she constantly sent lewd images to Steel, told him how horribly lonely she was, did this to other people that came forward, and that's not to mention the lies about having cancer, or getting raped, or getting pregnant, or anything else she says on any given subject in general. And best of all, I found out some very important information in a series of messages with a person who was formerly in this group and didn't actually like me very much. He admitted to everything, gave a whole timeline of what happened, what they chose to do, how they chose to do it, and why. All of this was literally started by Panda, because I told him to fuck off, blocked him, and didn't give him what he wanted. He was the one that orchestrated the slander campaign against me. It was Panda who convinced people like Pinecone to post shit on every website they could think of. It was Panda who convinced the girl to lie about what actually happened. It was Panda who used people to try and get back at me because some people talk shit to him on the internet. He even stooped to the level to dox me, begged Pinecone to release my personal info on Kiwi Farms, and tried to call my fucking job to get me fired. Luckily, I haven't worked at a delivery job in years, and Panda was just dumb enough to think I still worked there. He never gave a shit about actual justice. This fat fucking faggot is such a butthurt little pussy that he decided to try and destroy the lives of numerous people, all because he got made fun of and because I didn't give him something he wanted. Turns out my theory at Pinecone was slightly misplaced. Granted, he's still a piece of shit that spread lies and misinformation about me and other people, but it was Panda who convinced him to do it in the first place. Fucking M. Night Shyamalan couldn't come up with a more autistic plot twist. Panda can consider himself very lucky I don't know his name and address, because I'd take him to court and sue him if I did. Unfortunately, giving his Twitter handle to a lawyer isn't going to do much of anything. And the person who admitted all of this to me, whose name will remain anonymous because of what they might try and do to him, gave screenshots. Lots of them, and he has a lot more. This girl preyed on him, too. Same exact shit as I mentioned in my last video. She draws them in by instigating sexual conversations. She draws porn art of them and begs for attention. She plays the victim when she doesn't get her way, she gets mad and vindictive when she still doesn't get her way, and then she moves on to the next target and repeats the same process year after year after year. It's possible, given how involved she was and how many people she talked to sexually in their group, of which there were at least a couple minors that were significantly 
younger than her in that group, and other men that were older than her. That she used emotional manipulation and their infatuation with her to get them to white knight for her and Gab. And he shows screenshots of all of it, giving vivid detail into what they did and why they did it. The reason he came forward, aside from just wanting to set the record straight, was that his name was always dragged through the mud whenever he poked holes in their story. Unless you believe them 150% and never question their circle jerk, you're an enemy. And he was fed up with it. Even though he doesn't like me personally for views or opinions I've shown on this channel in the past, I commend and thank him for coming forward with this incredibly valuable information. You can find the full conversation with him in the description below. If you're still skeptical after my last video and still skeptical after this one, he revealed a lot of smoking gun shit. And with time, even Pinecone decided to come out and admit to what actually happened. You can also find that conversation in the description below. These people basically have whatever the light Yagami equivalent to a Chris Hansen complex would be, only where Chris Hansen actually takes down people who are actively out there maliciously preying on minors, they're fiddle-fucking around on the internet taking messages out of context or covering them up to make them look worse than they are. They've been at it for months, so it doesn't surprise me anymore that they're still grasping at straws to try and incriminate me, Steele, and anyone affiliated with either of us. As I expressed in my last video, honesty is not their forte. So with all that aside, I just want to say that for those of you who were concerned about me in the comments, I'm doing okay. I have a very shaky relationship with my family right now that I need to focus on fixing because of all of this. Currently, I've started going back into therapy. It's been a good long while since I last went, and I think it's time I started working things out with myself. I've spent most of my time reading, writing, and trying to work out more. During this whole situation, I started eating a lot more unhealthy food, and I've been working at bettering my physical health as much as my mental and emotional health. Having been on the internet since I was a kid, making videos since I was 14, I developed a bit of a skewed perception of reality. I focused more on the self-image of an over-exaggerated character online than who I really am. I've missed out on a lot of healthy development I needed in my day-to-day -day life and replaced it with obsessing over menial shit on the internet, and that's really just not healthy for me. As I said in the last video, even despite the context, even despite the things that were deliberately made up about me, the things that were covered up to make certain situations look worse than they were, the claims that don't have evidence, the lies, the evidence that many of the people making these claims against me are not only hypocrites, but pathological liars or sociopaths that have a long history of doing this kind of shit to other people, there are still horrible mistakes that I have made. I hate the person I was. There's still parts of me that I hate now. I didn't consider how my actions in the past could come back to haunt me in the future, didn't think of the way words or jokes could be twisted by people who don't like me. Like I said, if you haven't already seen the video, there's a ton of shit that I talk about that informs this whole bit, but in regards to the girl I was involved with, I know that what happened despite everything was wrong. I knew it then, and that's why I blocked her, got the hell away from that situation. There's context and there's nuance that's intentionally left out, and as I demonstrate in the video showing how often she lies, and by admissions from other people who knew her, showing the trends she still continues to this day, her accounts and the accounts of the people that she is involved with are about the furthest thing from trustworthy that you can get. However, that doesn't mean I'm not going to admit to my own wrongdoings. Yes, I was a naive, blithering fucktard that honestly probably could have used a few good pistol whips to the face back then. I didn't think. What happened wasn't right by any stretch of the imagination. I hate that part of my life. I hate the person I was. I hate the decisions I made. I hate how immediately trusting I was of people I hardly knew. People who have come back now to try and destroy my friendships, my relationship, my family, and my life. I hate that I didn't apply the same level of skepticism and critical thinking then as I try to do now. I'm not quite the sinister villain they want to paint me as, but let's not mince words here. I was an idiot. I was retarded. I shouldn't have made ill-informed assumptions. I shouldn't have sent explicit messages to someone I didn't know and trust. Hell, even if the two of us were mutually in our 30s and we knew each other for our entire lives personally, that would still be an idiotic thing to do. I frankly shouldn't have ever given her the time of day to begin with. I regret it, I'm ashamed of it, people will rightly think lesser of me for it, and it's something I have to contend with forever. My idiotic decisions as an 18 and 19 year old two and a half years ago landed me here today, and as I said in the video, there's no one to blame for my actions but myself. I could have made this easy, just never made these videos, deleted my channel, wiped all traces of me from the internet, disappeared entirely. Given the lack of evidence for the bulk of their claims and the messages that they deliberately covered up, I could have straight up just not admitted to doing anything wrong, and I'd have looked better. But I have some level of respect for the friends I've made and the people who followed me for so long. Actually opening up to the fact that I made one of the absolute dumbest decisions a person could possibly make was the furthest thing from easy. Humiliating myself in front of hundreds of thousands of people with my incompetence wasn't a high point in my life. But it's important
important that I fess up about what really happened, admit to my mistakes, own it, and bear the regret, the shame, and the public humiliation as consequence for my enormous fucking mistake. I think I owe it to people to come clean, admit to the things I truly did fuck up, and promise with everything I am to do better. Obviously, words aren't going to convince everyone, and they shouldn't. I should hold myself to a greater standard of moral integrity and general accountability. And if it means that every move I make for a long time is scrutinized by tens of thousands to ensure I abide by that standard, then maybe that's a good thing. For a long time, I was leading a really shameful lifestyle. I, for a long time, was a bit of a porn addict. I regularly did drugs with friends, hanging out with people in my personal life that only led me to acting like someone I'm not. I let vitriol and a desire to get a cheap laugh from shitty jokes and bad videos control my life. I let the novelty of being some kind of pseudo-internet comedian as of late to get to my head to the point that I didn't care about anything, didn't put the amount of effort I should have into my work, and let this whole situation happen in the first place. I've dug myself into this shithole, and it's up to me and only me to dig myself back out. I've had a lot of time to reflect on the things I've done and the things I've said. I know that a situation like this could very easily destroy my entire life, and I've had to come to terms with that. I've had to really evaluate my life as objectively as possible and come to the realization that the life I've been leading was poisonous. It pushed my friends away, it pushed my family away, and it pushed me to a place I don't want to go. It's put into perspective how much of a petty, worthless fuck-up I've been for my entire life. I don't expect forgiveness from anyone, and I still expect and accept any level of skepticism levied at this video in the last. Like I said, words are easy to say, but acting on them is something entirely different. I can't expect people to just instantly take my word for it, even if it would be nice if that were the case. I've made inexcusable choices that led me here. I'll have to live with this for the rest of my life. I'll have it commented on every video or post I make. I'll have it said to me 20 years from now. Some people I wanted to work with in the past won't want anything to do with me now because of this situation. I'll have to rebuild friendships and relationships and prove to those people I care about that this imbecilic, naive, sex-crazed, drug-addicted, emotionally unstable thing I've been portrayed as is not the real me. I don't expect anyone to just take that and accept it, and I don't expect anyone involved on either side to forgive the dumb shit I've said and done. It's a part of my life, it's my burden to carry, and it's up to me forever to ensure that the past doesn't dictate my future. I'd like to think that in the years since this situation happened, I've done a lot of growing. I still have a lot more to do, and it's about time I get on with it. So after this, I'm logging off YouTube, uninstalling the app from my phone, and I'm going back to living in the real world, and focusing on the things that are important and healthy for me. I'm not 100% sure if I'll come back to this channel. I do strongly want to in the near future, but it depends really on what's good for me. Like I said in the last video, if I do, I'll be changing this channel's name and the furry shit is gonna be gone for good. I might poke fun at them every now and again, but the gag is over. I don't want to be a part of that drama-infested community anymore, and honestly think it's for the best that I leave that shit behind me. This will be the final time I address this subject, and unless I think it's incredibly important, I'd like to just leave my personal life out of this channel. I want this to be set behind me for good. I will not give these people more attention, I will not speak to them, I will not reference them, and I will leave them to sit in their own irrelevance again. So this is where I leave off for a good long while. I'm going to focus on finishing up this semester and have been considering going for a trade since college is kind of, well, the SJWE. I'm going to focus my energy into bettering my physical health and working on my writing. I'm going to be regularly attending therapy again and try to work out the things that I've needed to work out for a while now. I'm going to return to doing the things I've always loved, being reading, playing video games, watching movies, and playing the guitar. I'm going to focus on rebuilding the shaky relationships I have with my family and friends and above it all going to spend the time with my girlfriend that we've really needed for a long time now. I likely won't be back until the end of this year or the beginning of 2019. I won't be back on every frame of pause for a while either, but I'm still talking to Rags, Mauler, and Fringy. They're all really invaluable friends that have shown me more care and support than I could have ever imagined. Frankly, I'm not sure I deserve friends like that, but I'm glad for them and everything they've done for me during this time. Again, to all of you who left so many kind messages on my video, sent me direct messages, or even relayed messages through my friends, I thank all of you for it. I can't express how much it really means to me to see so many people who genuinely seem to care about me. I don't know where this is all going to take me, but I know that wherever it goes, it'll be a better, healthier, and more positive place than before. I hope to see you again soon.